Hi, this is a Bollinger Band strategy that works on powerful stocks. It was presented by Reiner Theo in one of his videos showing good and steady returns, so I thought we could automate the whole process in Python and backtest it on historical data. The interesting and surprising part, there are different ways Bollinger Bands are computed depending on which platform you are using. Although this shouldn't be happening in theory, but Bollinger Bands from different sources or platforms differ quite a lot surprisingly. As usual, the backtesting code is available for download from the link in the description of this video so you can download it, repeat the experiment, maybe change some parameters and improve the results. So in our code we will backtest the strategy but we will also investigate the different Bollinger Band methods to understand which Bollinger's version is actually compatible with this trading strategy. You can easily verify this using TradingView, the same parameters for Bollinger Band as in Reiner's video and you will notice that the curves are completely different. In this example, I will be plotting the different versions that might be obtained using different formulas for the same Bollinger Band parameters. The strategy is simple. It's a long only, which means we only look for buying opportunities. We will wait for the price to break above the upper Bollinger curve to identify an entry position. Bollinger parameters are length equal to 200, and the upper curve is obtained by multiplying the standard deviation by 4. And this is where we should be aware of the different ways of computing the Bollinger standard deviation. It turns out that the standard deviation can differ from one source to another. The standard deviation can be computed considering the moving average. So in other words, it's the variation of the moving average itself over the last few values. It can also be obtained from the closing price variation instead of the moving average or also the variation between the closing price and the moving average, which is basically the variation of the difference between the price and the moving average. In my opinion, this last method reflects more the definition of Bollinger Bands that should represent the variation of the price around the moving average. Anyway, these are a few examples. Now we will write all of these in our Python code and see how they influence our trading signals before proceeding with the backtest of the strategy. This is our Jupyter Notebook uh, file. So we're loading the data. I downloaded the data using Y Finance. So these are the daily time frame data. I have three different stocks. We're going to use three of them for now to adjust test the strategy on three different stocks. I'm just cleaning the uh, empty candles, dropping missing values and resetting the index, computing the EMA using Pandas TA, technical analysis package. And the length is equal to 300. So these are the parameters used by Reiner Theo in his video. Then the ATR, just in case needed for a stop loss or a trailing stop. So I'm going to use a trail stop because I believe it works better uh, this way. Reiner Theo in his video was using standard deviation for the Bollinger Band 0.5. And whenever the uh, the price dropped below this curve, uh, he would exit the um, he would exit the trade. So in our case, we're going to use a trailing stop. I believe it brings better results for, for this type of strategies. So anyway, I kept the um, Bollinger Bands computation here. So we have length equal to 100 and standard deviation equal to 4. And then length equal to 100 and standard deviation equal 0 0.5, just in case you want to experiment on your own using these Bollinger Bands. Then I'm computing three different Bollinger Band standard deviation upper curves. The first one is using the EMA. The moving average. So this is basically the uh, four times the standard deviation over the last 200 values of the EMA. But th by definition, this doesn't uh, make sense because it doesn't stick with the Bollinger Bands definition. But this is the only curve that works. I'm going to show you why later on. The second one is the upper Bollinger Band using the closing price. So we're using a rolling 200 window over the closing price four times the standard deviation. And the third one, we're using the mid price, which is usually what is used when we compute the uh, Bollinger Bands on different platforms online. So it's also a rolling window over 200. And we're using the mid price, which is the close open and high divided by three. So and using the STD function to obtain the uh, standard deviation. Then I'm using also the uh, Bollinger Band, the lower curve of the Bollinger Band, using the 0 0.5 standard deviation rolling over a window of 200, actually. So this is how Reiner Theo was using it in the video he presented. But we're not going to use these. It's a lot of experimentation. It's a lot of cases. I'm going to compare these three curves. And uh, just so you know, this curve, using technical analysis or using the mid price, which is very close to uh, this curve, it doesn't uh, give you any signals because the way it works, we wait for a candle to close above this Bollinger Band four times the standard deviation. It's never going to happen. This is why 
we had the doubt and I started digging around how to compute the Bollinger Bands and how is it computed on different platforms. But before we make the comparison, let me show you the uh, signal function. So we're defining a new EMA signals function. It takes the data frame and the number of back candles. It's going to check if, let's say, all the back candles are above the EMA curve, in which case the signal will be equal to two because we need the candles to be in an uptrend. So this is a long only strategy. So we need to have a strong uptrend, which means that we need the candles to be above the EMA curve. And instead of looking for one candle, the current candle, if it's above, the uh, EMA curve, we're going to look for the last, let's say, five or six back candles. This will confirm the signal of the trend and the signal using the moving average. Here in this example, I'm using back candles equal five. So I'm running this and it's going to give us a new column called EMA signal. So that's the trend signal, but that's not our total signal. The total signal is the following. It's equal to two, which means an uptrend. If the EMA signal equal to two, so if we have an uptrend using the EMA, and at the same time, if the current closing price of the current candle is above the upper curve of the Bollinger Band. Otherwise, we have a zero. And this is where we can use different uh, upper curves of the Bollinger Bands. As you can see, the previous row is using Bollinger Band upper 204.0. So this one was computed using Panda's technical analysis. And this one is actually using the EMA. So that's basically the Bollinger Band using the uh, standard deviation over the EMA. We can use any of these. We can try the three of these or any other approach computing the upper curve of the Bollinger Band. Most importantly is to know what we are using and to understand what's happening. So I'm going to run this cell, get the total signal. And in this cell, we have a straight comparison of the values of the upper curve of the Bollinger Band between the um, closing price, the EMA, and the one obtained using Panda's technical analysis and the one obtained using the mid price. You can see the values here in these four columns. And some of them are very close to each other. Some of them differ quite a lot, as you may have noticed. And we can verify this by checking this chart and the details. So we have Bollinger Band 200 in length, close 4.0 for the standard deviation. So it's over the closing price. And then when we look at this right here, we have a price that's crossing the um, uh, the curve, which if you try to verify this on trading view, you will never get a price crossing the upper Bollinger Band if you use four times the standard deviation. So basically, when I was trying this, I got zero signals, which was the reason why I was investigating further this curve. Now, I want to know what you think about this. If you feel like you need to dig further into this topic, just leave me comments. Let me know what you think, if there are any clear solutions for this part. Now, just to make sure that we have some signals, I'm going to display this. So we have 762 uh, long signals. We can plot some of these. So it's not really 700. Some of these are repetitive because the condition is kind of uh, repeating itself for a cluster of signals. This is by using the Bollinger Band over the EMA or the moving average. Now we could backtest this strategy. I used a size of trade that's equal to 10% of the equity. I used a trail percentage, so 2%. That's a trailing stop, which is defined here using a distance of 2% of the current price at the moment we open the position. And actually, this is only the start because then we can optimize this distance, testing for different distances and see which distance will provide the best results. So now I also included commissions. I included 5% of commissions, which is relatively huge in terms of commissions because we're always criticized. We're not including any commissions in our trading and so on. So this time I included the commissions. And as you can see, it's 50% uh, of returns and the annual return is around 3%. But this is only using one stock. We could try it on different stocks. You can run this strategy. The idea is to actually to run the strategy on different stocks in parallel. So instead of 3%, you would increase your um, returns. But at the same time, you might need more money because if you're trading more, you need more money to be able to buy more shares. Later, you can print the uh, different trail percentages, parameters, and their results. So I'm going to print this part here. And we can see that we have a few negative percentages here. And this strategy apparently becomes profitable when we increase the trail stop distance by more than 5%.
starting from 6% up to, I don't know, 20%, for example. But we can change the stock as well. We can, for example, use the uh, Russell 1000 data. I'm going to rerun this, checking for signals. So we have 800 signals, so we do have some signals. Things look well. We have prices above the uh, EMA, the moving average, so we are in an uptrend. And these candles all closing above this curve, which is the curve actually that we are using for the trading. It's the upper Bollinger Band curve. Now let's run the yeah, test and we get 62%. Remember that we are using commissions and an annual return of 3.4. And the heat map actually is also almost the same as the previous. So we need a high trail stop distance. This is where the strategy becomes profitable. The reason this strategy works is simply because the stock is going up. All of these stocks, this is what we mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is a strategy that's um, adapted for strong stocks. A strong stock is a stock that's always in that's always in an uptrend. It's always going up. And basically, if you go long only, it makes sense that your strategy will be uh, a winning strategy. Now, just out of curiosity, I'll be computing the signal using a different Bollinger Band, upper Bollinger Band curve. Let's take this one. It's using the closing price, which is basically what Rhino Theo is showing in the video. So I'm going down and instead of the uh, EMA, I'm using the closing price Bollinger Band. I'm going to run everything again just to make sure that we didn't omit any detail. And now let's check how many signals we have. Zero signals. We don't have any opportunities where we are in an uptrend and the candles are closing above this curve. And if we plot the curve, I could show you the curve. It's um, this one, the red one. It's way too far from the candles to be crossed. So conditions in Reiner's video are never verified. So this is an uptrend clearly. And clearly these candles are closing above the upper Bollinger Band curve. But if you try to look for these conditions, they are very rare, and in my case, I tried three different powerful stocks going uptrend all the time, the Russell, the S&P 500, and some other stocks, and I never got this condition verified. I got zero signals, just as I'm showing you here in this video. So if you have any comments about this uh, strategy, if you have any comments about this trading style and this strategy, please let us know, share your ideas and thoughts. We might have missed something in this video. One thing for sure is an advantage is that when you use the daily time frame, we're not scared of commissions. Uh, notice that I've added a very generous commission, which is 5% per trade. This is huge. It's usually much less than this. And we are still in the positive right here. Now, if I remove the commissions, if I put zero, we need to correct the signal. I refurbish this one, go back here. When we remove the commissions, we are around 4.4% per year. And then if we add this generous commission, we drop down to 3.4% per year. On the daily time frame, the wins are large enough to cover up for all commissions and trading fees. And this was it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Please let me know what you think about these methods of trading, the signals, the Bollinger Bands and so on. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.